Hi there. Most plants get food from the soil on which they grow. But what about plants living in areas with insufficient nutrients? This problem has been solved and is presented to the world by amazing creatures, plants that turn their stems and leaves into deadly traps. They learn to dissolve and assimilate the bodies of their victims, and most importantly, they developed unique ways to lure prey. Predators in our garden, which have become a unique link in the food chain. These green predators live, as a rule, in places with a lack of nitrogen and mineral salts in the soil, and animal food serves as an excellent source of both. Carnivorous plants can eat just like their carnivorous counterparts, but this makes them lethargic and shortens their life cycle. Today, more than 600 species of predator plants are known, divided into three groups. Insectivores, which prey mainly on insects, aquatic, which fish for catching micro crustaceans, and omnivores, plants with traps large enough to catch small animals. After a successful hunt, the caught game is digested with a kind of gastric acid, which is produced by special glands of the plant, or the caught creature dies and decays, and the plant absorbs the decomposition products. Representatives of the insectivore plants in Europe and America is Drosera, also known as the sundew. Most often, it can be found growing in swampy areas, in places poor in useful minerals, the so-called acidic soils. In summer, blooming sundew can be recognized by small white flowers growing on a long stem. Sundew itself is a rather imperceptible swamp insectivorous grass with leaves lying on the ground, dotted with hairs. The fluid secreted by the hairs is very similar to dew. But in reality, it is a deadly glue for insects, as well as an enzyme for digesting prey. The victim was attracted by the smell of this pseudodew, sits on the leaf, and sticks to it. The hairs press the miserable creature to the surface of the leaf, the enzymes begin the process of dissolving the food, and the leaf itself, meanwhile, curls up, depriving the prisoner of its last chance of salvation. The remains that sundew did not digest fall to the ground, after which, the leaves take their usual form, the hairs are covered with beads of sticky dew, and a new hunt begins. Some especially large sundew species can catch even careless frogs and small birds. Science knows about 130 varieties of these plants. And similar to the habitat of sundew, you can meet another green predator, Pinguicula, also known as butterwort. In appearance, butterwort is a plant of large, tapering leaves at the end, covered with a shiny, sticky, greasy mass. During flowering, a stem with a purple flower grows from the center of the plant. The principle of hunting and feeding butterwort strongly resembles sundew. Insects are attracted by the smell of fat that stick to the leaf, which is wrapped inward, and digestive secretions break down the prey. The resulting minerals and amino acids are absorbed by the plant. Then the leaf unfolds and awaits for the next portion of guests. The only plant of prey, the process of catching insects in which you can see with the naked eye, is the Venus flytrap cage plant. Its leaves look like the mouth of an unknown monster. Each jaw is littered with spine fangs, which act as lattices in the cell. When the leaf slams shut, the prey can no longer get out of it. In the case when the leaf is slammed idle, or something inedible gets into it, it will open within half an hour. If an insect is caught, the trap remains closed for several weeks until the food is completely absorbed. This green monster grows in a humid temperature climate on the Atlantic coast of the USA, Florida, North and South Carolina, and New Jersey. Darlingtonia californica, also called the California pitcher plant. It also loves marshland and looks like a cobra ready to throw. It was for their pitchers, shaped like a snake's hood, that the Darlingtonia got its nickname, cobra plant. This is a truly insidious plant. It not only lures insects with a sweet aroma into its pitcher, but also has numerous false exits on its walls directed downward and not allowing the victim to get out. 
The habitat of another carnivorous plant called Nepenthes, or tropical pitcher plant, are tropical forests. It grows mainly on a vine, but among the 80 varieties of this plant, there are shrubs. It got its name tropical pitcher plant for its special leaf shape, reminiscent of a pitcher, which helps him collect rainwater. These pitchers are also large enough to include frogs, rodents, and small birds. However, insects remain the main prey of Nepenthes. One of the inside walls of the Nepenthes are glands that produce nectar and wax. Nectar lures prey, and smooth wax prevents the insects from escaping, falling into the water at the bottom of the pitcher, drowning. And here, Utricularia, also known as bladderwort, is a predator plant whose habitat is stagnant water. Bladderwort is devoid of the usual roots for plants, which is why it preys on insects and small crustaceans. Catching bubbles are found with leaves underwater, and only its flowers float on the surface. The bubbles have a certain entrance, which opens as soon as an insect is nearby. The signal for opening the bubble comes from the hair probes located near the entrance. When the insect hooks the hair, the bubble opens and draws prey inward along with water, then begins the digestion of the food. The next carnivorous plant is the handsome Biblis. The places of growth for this low shrub are North Australia and the south of New Guinea, as well as small areas in Western Australia. Biblis branches are dotted with long narrow leaves on the surface of which there are bristles and glands that secrete a strong sticky substance and digestive enzyme. Both insects and small animals fall into such a trap. Australian Aborigines once believed that Biblis was even capable of catching and digesting humans, but this did not stop them from using the leaves as a source of glue. And this bright representative of carnivorous plants lives in swamps and belongs to the family Sarnaceae. Saracenia has vibrant flowers and bright green leaves with raspberry capillary lines. Its leaves resemble envelopes exuding sweet juice. Having fallen into such a trap, the insect is doomed. But the scenario with digestion and assimilation is still the same. And although the process of hunting Saracenia is not as spectacular as, for example, hunting Venus flytrap, nevertheless, it is quite interesting to observe the flower. Aldravanda vesiculosa, also known as the water wheel plant. This is a magnificent rootless carnivorous aquatic plant. It usually feeds on small aquatic vertebrates using the so-called trap. The plant consists mainly of free-floating stems that are up to 16 inches long. Traps are attached to the petioles, which contain air, allowing the plant to swim. It is a fast-growing plant, and growth can reach 0.35 inches per day, and in some cases, produces a new curl every day. While the plant grows at one end, the other end gradually dies. The plant trap consists of two lobes that slam shut like a trap. The holes of the trap are directed outward and covered with thin hairs that allow the trap to close around any victim that is close enough. The trap closes in a few milliseconds which is an example of the fastest movement in the animal world. Today, these wonderful plants can be purchased at many flower shops, including via the internet. The buyer is given a very wide selection, so if you have a desire to decorate your house and at the same time clean it from annoying insects, these green predators can help you with this. And that's all for today. Put like if you like this video. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more.